Hey guys, Helping Hands here, bringing you another Company of Heroes 2 video. In this video, we'll be talking about the brand new USF Commander Urban Assault Company. Um, here we can see that zero CPs and, and also zero CPs, the Urban Assault Kit and the M4A3 Sherman Assault Package Upgrade. You have the Rangers, you have Cover to Cover and the Sherman Calliope. In my opinion, this is a really good USF Commander. It makes, um, the, uh, you know, Rayshalon's a bit powerful in the earlier game with the, with the rifle grenades. Uh, rifles also have Molotovs, which allow them to clear buildings, that kind of thing. The Sherman Bulldozer gives it a lot more health. Uh, you'll see um, in detail when I go into these commanders in a second. And cover to cover, that's a very good ability as well. You can drop smoke and also increases your infantry's movement speed. And 10 CPs, you can get the Sherman Calliope, which is a very good indirect fire unit. It's probably one of the most uh, hard to kill uh, indirect fire units because it's a tank, right? It's got a lot of HP, whereas most uh, artillery pieces always get killed in like a couple of shots, whereas the Sherman takes a little bit more than that. Um, however, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Urban Assault Company. Hello guys, here we go. We just got some rear echelons right here. We've got four of them all upgraded with the rifle grenade. The rifle grenade costs 60 munitions, doesn't cost any CP requirements. So as soon as you have 60 munitions, you can get it straight away. It doesn't require any tech at all. So your first 60 munitions will go straight into this um, upgrade on your rifle, on your rear echelons. So I would always recommend probably building a couple of them if you're doing this strategy because one rifle grenade alone is not going to do much damage. But if you've got a few of them, uh, then yeah, they will do a lot of damage. So we've got four here. In a 1v1, you probably want to, you know, two would probably be enough, maybe three if you're feeling ballsy. But I'll just, you know, give you an example of how effective the rifle grenades, you know, as a group of them use, using, you know, use them together, they are really effective. So over here we have an Okida, uh, an Austere MG. And what we'll do now is we will attack it. So we'll have one unit over here. Which is going to uh, get the attention of the machine gun. You can still fire the rifle grenades while being suppressed. But the best thing about the rifle grenades, guys, is that you can lob the grenades over sight blockers, shot blockers here, right? So if we can see the enemy, our uh, guy is going to attack and lob them the grenades. And it's a good idea. I recommend using attack rounds so you're more accurate with the rifle grenades themselves. So there you go. You can lob the grenades over the top. And look how quickly a couple of rifle grenades cleans that machine gun up. There you go. Instantly. Check, or not instantly. But you get it. It's quite quick and you can clean up MGs very effectively. Um, you know, you, you, utilizing uh, sight, line of sight blockers where the enemy can't actually shoot back at you. So you could do this anywhere, for instance. You could shoot the, you know, if there's an enemy inside this house, for instance, you could come over and lob a nade. Um, just about, I think, over the top there. Rotate right. the camera around. So yeah, you can lob, you know, there's a machine gun hiding in that house there. You can lob nades over this little bit of wall here. Uh, and like, you know, like I say, you can do it any side of the map where you could possibly got, you know, line of sight blocker or on any type of map. You can you can utilize this. So, for instance, an enemy in this big house over here, you come around the side here, lob rifle grenades at the top. Um, right. So let's move on to the next bit. I'll show you how effective rifle grenades are against the blob of enemy units coming forward. I'd also recommend using the rifle grenade guys um, again using rifle. Uh, sorry, attack round because you always want to be firing at where the enemy is going to be, not where they're currently at. It's the same thing with like the Brumbar or the Stuggy. Um, you always want to be shooting at where the enemy are heading towards, not where they're right at the moment, because otherwise you're going to miss, right? So right now we have a group of Grenadiers. I'm just going to get these guys to attack move over here. So we're going to selection. So we tell them to attack move to here. Uh, selection uh, owner enemy. So they're pushing in. These Grens. So what we're going to do, they're, they're pushing towards us, right? So we, um, we're we going to try and deal with them effectively. So they're going to come in like this. So we're going to pop some grenades in there. You can see if they're all bunched up like this, the nades do quite a lot of damage, see? You know, and if he tries to dodge them, for instance, you just, like, like I say, you, you, you fire the, the nades where they're currently, um, where they're currently moving towards, right? And if you're lobbing the nades, like, you know, loads of different directions, you can't possibly dodge them, right? So, for instance, let's say, um, a grenadier was moving over to the left or the right, you'd have one guy we do attack around ground here, the other guy would attack around the right, and the other guy would attack around the mid, and then you've got three grenades in like a triangle formation around the enemy. So that meet would mean wherever you decide to go, you'd probably get damaged by at least one of the nades, right? So um, that's what you want to try and aim for with these nades. But they are very effective uh, against enemy infantry, especially if you're up against people blobbing and also like support weapons because they can't move quickly, right? So let's move on to the next thing um, in, in the first CP, which is um, oh, one other thing, uh, Rishrons, they can also, as you probably already know, they can go to 5M once they get some veterancy on. And with the rifle grenade strap, they get veterancy quite quickly. And so when they get a veterancy 3, they get a 5th man, so increase their survivability. Um, and they also, you know, obviously with a 5th man, it also increase their repair speed. 
One other thing as well is that they can also equip one extra weapon slot. So they can upgrade either a Zook or a Bar from, for instance, the base. Or maybe your teammate might drop down, for instance, uh, a Vickers K if he's playing uh, Brits and he's using that half jack. Um, okay. So let's go on to Rifle Urban, which now have the ability to lob Molotovs. So let's go. So to get Molotov upgrade, right, you, you need jump. to have tech. Let's and it says Platoon Command Post or com uh, Company Command Post. So it's either Tier 2, so it's either... Lieutenant Tech or Captain Tech? So for a second, we'll just go get the LT out. Has been assigned to now we've got Molotovs, basically the same type of thing as the Soviets. So we have a machine gun here, and we'll attack it from yeah, different directions with, with riflemen here. I mean, machine gun's probably going to try and turn to deal with us. Uh, if not, you know, we just mob in a cheeky Molotov like that. And, you know, you know what Molotovs do. It burns enemies, you know, behind cover. Um, and it's very effective against enemies in buildings like so. It's, you know, it's a good way to clear enemies out of a certain area. It might not be, you know, it, you know, a good opponent will dodge it, but at least it denies them their cover. So that's kind of the Steady idea up. behind the Ascension Grenade. It's denying enemy uh, okay, we'll cover positions rather than, you know, purely to do damage, which it can, which it does do, but it's just like, to, you know, it's important to deny. Uh, let's move on to the next thing then. So the next thing is the, sh the, the, the Bulldozer Sherman. So the Bulldozer Sherman Looks upgrade like is also zero CPs. Um, as soon as you get your Sherman out, you can then equip it. So the Sherman Bulldozer upgrade is 50 uh, manpower and 20 fuel. We can still upgrade the Browning M2 HB machine gun. And it acts like the Bulldozer Sherman uh, with the big long range shot uh, where it can, you know, build cover like so. That acts as some nice green cover your units can use now. Maybe you want to put a 50 cal behind there. But it also can destroy said cover once you want to get rid of it, for instance. Just demolish it like so. There you go. But also, you know, it's good, you know, now it's got the bulldozer, it can now just travel through like hedgerows and, and crush it. So it's a good way to just crush certain terrain parts, maybe open the field up a little bit. One other thing that, that it does, uh, once you get the, the, the bulldozer thing, is now you can have a white phosphorus shell. So this is a very good ability to hit on support weapons and units that bumped up. You know, this is a shell that does a lot of damage over time. Um, what's you, 20 munitions. And the Sherman still has smoke screen. You can also change over to high explosive and armor piercing rounds like a normal Sherman can. So guys, the other thing that the Sherman Bulldozer upgrade does give to the Sherman is more armor. So it goes from 160 slash 80 to 215 slash 105. So um, the health, however, does remain the same for a total of 720. This means, the fact that it's got more armor means it's more likely to bounce shells uh, from medium vehicles and generally it will take you know therefore longer to kill compared to a Sherman without a bulldozer upgrade so that makes the Shermans a lot more beefier against enemy medium armor and they'll have a better chance to do so so here we have a Panzer IV versus Sherman let's see who will win this fight again this is due to RNG who might win but generally this Sherman should beat this Panzer IV now that it has the bulldozer upgrade compared to one without so here we go open up on each other so now you can see the first shell of the Panzer IV has bounced off the armor of the Sherman, and so has the second one. Almost has like priest armor, but it does not make you impenetrable from medium rounds. Some will pet, some will bounce, some will penetrate. But there you go. Three out of four rounds have bounced. And then get another one bounce. And there you go, a clear victory for the Sherman with the Bulldozer uh, upgrade. So then, just to de demonstrate, we're now going to swap in, uh, you know, another Sherman without it this time. And I'll show you, you know, the, the, the Panzer IV should have a lot more opportunity here to penetrate. Uh, here we got austere tanks, Panzer IV. Turn it around, keep that kind of max distance from each other. Selection, own an enemy, they should now stop fighting each other. So now this is more of an even fight, whereas before it was more one-sided. We can see now that the, uh, the Panzer IV has penetrated twice. Three times now. Even the Shermans have been difficult trying to penetrate the Panzer IV. Oh. But, yeah, there you go. Again, that's due to RNG, the amount of bouncing. But you can see here, though, that the Sherman... Lot, lot, a lot less health compared to the one that had the bulldozer upgrade. So you get an idea. Um, of course, there will be shells bouncing and, 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 and penetrating uh, in, in a 
you know, a case like this, you know, just a one time, for instance. But if we if we repeated this fight many times, it'd be you can clearly see that the Sherman with the Bulldozer will have a lot better time against enemy armor uh, than, for instance, the one that doesn't have the upgrade. Next thing is the, is the Rangers. You know what Rangers do? Amazing elite infantry against the close quarters combat. If we just spawn in some Germans quickly over here, you know, you'll see that they just absolutely shred them. Change of plan. Selection owner enemy. Yeah, no, no contest there. They just absolutely murder them. Very good infantry. Um, they're, they're only good though versus um, infantry, I'm afraid. But they can be equipped with zooks. As you can see here, they've got M9 bazookas are more effective when used by elite infantry such as rangers and paratroopers. So if they, if you decided instead of the Thompsons, you were to pick up two zooks for your squad. Like so. Secure that bazooka. These now they now have two zooks that does lock out their ability to use the um, Thompsons, but they are now quite effective against vehicles. The zooks are going to be more accurate than compared to like Rechelons with zooks. But normally I wouldn't put zooks on rangers because you could normally just get away with just getting an anti tank gun, um, a couple of anti tank guns to fill in the gap, and you've got your rifles there to snare if you need to. Uh, I wouldn't really, you know, I wouldn't, in my. In my Let's move out. You, I'd rather have the Rangers as core anti infantry away. units um, with their Thompsons and stuff. Watch your space. As that's what they do. They, they're good against killing enemy infantry. I mean, this Orders. unit will still be roughly okay versus infantry now, but no way near as good as the Ranger squad with the Thompsons. They will absolutely d decimate anything. But it's also worth noting the Rangers are expensive. They are 350 manpower Square the troops away. and 32 that's manpower to reinforce compared to. Like a, a lieutenant, which got is 28, and I think a rechelon is 20, and a rifle is around about 22 or something like that. But yeah, I might not be right there, but it's roughly about that that, that, that cost. But the idea, you know, point is, rangers are expensive, you know. So if you're gonna get, I'd only probably get out one of these guys, one of these squads, because they, you know, they'll they'll bleed, they'll eat into your manpower reserves, and then you won't be able to make any new units because if you make too many rangers, yeah, it'll just be too expensive for you overall. Uh, also, this other ability here, we've got area to cover to cover, so we can drop a massive amount of smoke. Let's say we just drop some smoke here. See, so all our units now have sprint now in the area that is activated. And now the smoke's dropped down, and then we can push in and rush in against an enemy unit. So let's say we smoke the machine gun, it allows us to get closer. So if I was to do it here, so this squad you know, is going to be active in the, in the area because it was because um, of the green circumference of the ability, but this squad wasn't, okay? But if I did this like that, that both squads would be, so you get, you get the idea. And you want to place exactly where you want the smoke to drop, okay? There you go. So this is an ability I hardly ever use actually as well, so I'm going to try and learn how to use this some more. I'm actually learning, teaching myself here while doing this video to see how it actually works. But uh, yeah, if you did it like about here, so you want to make sure all your so basically before you drop it, guys, you want to make sure all your infantry that is going to be present in the attack is in the, the circumference of this big green aura, right? If you're outside, it won't affect the units, right? And then show the calliope. Move us out. Okay, so the changes to the calliope are as follows: uh, the far AOE damage has gone from 0 0.15 to 0 0.25. Cost has been reduced in terms of fuel by 30. Five, no, twenty-five. I can't do maths. Um, reload is been has gone down to one point two five to zero point one two five. And AOE is from four to five, and health has been reduced from four hundred eighty to four hundred. So basically, it's more potent now, but it's more easy to kill. Okay, in a nutshell. So the Cali the Calliope, when you're going to fire it. Uh, you always want to try and fire at close quarters, as you can see, uh, if possible, and it, if it's safe to do so, right? Because that means the spread of the uh, the rockets will be a lot tighter. So you can see here, quite tight, a little bit bigger, and then further away, the the, uh, the circumference of the circle, you can see, and the maximum range of the Calliope is quite varied. So you want to be about this, you know, if you can, if you can like, sneak up as close as you can, preferably using a shot the sight blocker like this, where the enemy can't see you behind, and you've got infantry defending you from either side, so it's nice and protected. You want to come behind here, and then that's when you want to freaking lob down a calliope round like so, because those rockets are going to be a lot more accurate and wrecking the enemy. And you can see how much damage um, the calliope is in the cover. So, you know, if you this enemy blob in this area, they'd all get absolutely toasted, right? 
So you can see how effective the Calliope rounds uh, can be when used effectively, okay? Um, hey guys, thank you for watching that video. If you want more content, please click on the link over here and over here. If you would like to subscribe, click on the button down here. Also click on the notification bell down there so you're notified whenever I post new YouTube content. I also stream nearly every single day on Twitch. Uh, I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash helpinghands. Uh, and if you want to show your support there, please do subscribe uh, as all your support helps me do this full time. And uh, yeah, guys, I appreciate it as always and catch you next time. Bye-bye.